it's great to be back out on the road. We started off in uh, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, and then USA, uh, South America, and we're finishing off in Europe. The new stuff's going down great. It was that uh, we purposely recorded it the way we did the first three albums, which was um, forgot about all the modern technology like that we did in the old days. So everything was recorded live in the studio. And that was like surprised everybody because we hadn't actually just sat down and come up with something off the top of our head since we did uh, the song Paranoid back in 1970. <laughs> So the biggest challenge of being bass tech for Geezer is one, having good gear. You want to have good gear that you can trust and rely on and know that it's going to work when you go, because we go from city to city, you know, and sometimes you don't have time to work on it. You get in, you got to get it up and you got to get going. So yeah, so having good gear, and things that are reliable and you know are reliable because you've used them on the road before is a big comfort. I remember uh, Geezer telling me a story in the uh, his late 70s, early 80s guitars, which BC Riches then had EMGs. In the 70s, I had a BC Rich bass. Bernie Rico actually made this custom bass for me, and it had the uh, active EMGs in it. And I absolutely loved the sound. I did uh, Heaven and Hell album and the Mob Rules album when Ronnie James D. I was singing with us. My bass tech, Terry Welter, he suggested a couple of years ago that EMG make some really great bass pickups. Uh, so I called Rob Turner and Chris Johnson about possibly making a pickup for Geezer for this, you know, the 13 tour. So then I installed it in the, uh, the White Lake that Geezer plays live. And I didn't tell him until after the first show that he used it. I played that in one song for the first time and the front of house guy said that bass sounded absolutely great and it sounded great to me as well. It was like ultra loud. I remember when he came off stage he goes, well the white bass is louder than all the rest. And I said, well it's a, it's a different pickup and he asked me what it was and I told him and he goes, well it sounded good. And the front of house guy for Sabbath also commented that that was the better sounding guitar of the bunch. So it led me to call uh, Chris and Rob back and, and order some more. I was talking to Geezer one night and he was telling me that he's never had a signature guitar. I took that and I called uh, John at Lakeland and said, you know, here's something funny is Geezer's never had a signature bass guitar. And he goes, well, we should probably work on that. And I said, that's exactly what I was thinking. So I ran it past Geezer and he's like, well, yeah, let's, you know, get a design and a mock-up and, and we can work on it. Well, I've been playing Lakeland basses for uh, probably 15 years now. I really like the feel of them, they're really incredibly well made. I just approached them about doing a signature bass. And uh, Geezer sent me some pictures of his favorite guitars from the 70s and 80s. You know, like the one guitar he likes that had the stripes. I've been working on the design, the striped pick guard is from a design that I had in the 1970s on one of my first custom basses that I had made in England. So it's anodized aluminum and it has the black stripes. Uh, same with the cross here. What we like about this guitar, it resembles a P bass. Uh, so we kind of wanted to keep that in there too because he's used to the, the feel, the body, and the, the cut of the wood. I love the DR strings because um, I think every bass player that plays with the fingers will tell you that you can get very bad blistering. And the way these uh, the DR strings are designed, they've got this wicking thing built into them and it sort of wicks the sweat from your finger and you don't get blisters. Because when you're rehearsing, you don't play as hard because there's no audience to play to, so you, you just like, you can go for two weeks rehearsing, your, your fingers will be all right. But then as soon as you get out on stage and you're playing to a live audience, you're playing that much harder. I used to find I was getting blisters on my fingers, but the DR strings, uh, I don't get blisters with them anymore. And then the last thing was I needed some really good pickups. Uh, the reason why I chose the MG for the signature pickup, I wanted the uh, classic Fender P bass sound I used to get in the late 60s, early 70s. Nobody seems to be able to get anymore, so uh, once I tried the EMG, I really like that kind of sound. I got the, the old Fender sound, but without all the problems that I used to have with the Fender stuff. After a couple of uh, different versions of the EMGs that I, I loved, 
The next step was to do a geezer butler signature pickup. It's going to be great. So the way the Harky rigs came about was uh, Geezer was playing the uh, Dimebag Bash uh, in California and called me and said that there was going to be a Harky Kilo on stage. I actually did a gig in California. Different bass players are getting up and jamming. And Hartke was sponsoring the uh, the amps and everything for, for the show. They supplied all the amps. And I've never used Harky before. I had a quick fiddle with them. I've got this great sound. And the thing that I really love about it, it's got the overdrive. Uh, and these amps have a lot of power. They have a lot of output. Currently on tour, we use four Kilo 1000s live. And um, plus, uh, they made me these incredible cabinets all custom built for this new tour that we're on. This is my signature bass, signature pickups. So this is it, this is the gear. This is the uh, signature Lakeland guitar, the signature EMG pickups, the DR strings. So you have to have something reliable more than anything. That's the most important thing. And so here they are.